All right, make sure you set the parking brake and chalk your wheels. All the wheels must be on the ground. I start by removing the old sway bar connections to the sway bar link. The bolt will be reused. There are six bolts total to remove. On the D bushings, the front bolt was installed by the factory using what appeared to be permanent thread lock. It was extremely difficult to remove. Here you can use an impact wrench. I always reinstall bolts with hand tools as I do not want to cross thread the bolts. I remove the driver's side sway bar link in the same way and the remaining D bushings by hand. Now you can see that the sway bar is free and it can be removed from the chassis. Okay, now that we got the factory sway bar out, I want to talk to you about this bolt right here. This is the biggest bolt that holds this thing to the frame. Ford used a non-removable thread lock. And it was a pain to get this out, but once I got it out, I cleaned all the thread lock out of uh, this on a, with a wire wheel. And then I've come back out here and I'm just gonna run this thing back up in there because you can tell it's still tight. Now I'm just gonna run it up in there, kind of clean the threads out. So it'll make my install easier. So even after cleaning this bolt on a wire wheel brush and using the lacquer there and brushing it out with a brass brush, look how much uh, more thread lock this brake parts cleaner got out just by spraying it on there. All that dark blue stuff is more thread lock. So I'm cleaning that. Now I'm gonna spray some up here too, just to clean these threads so my new thread lock will work. I don't think there's any in that hole, but I'm still gonna clean it out. All right, we got that side done. We're gonna do the other side, and then we're gonna install this baby. All right, let's look at this thing compared to the factory. Of course, this is the factory anti-sway bar, or sway bar. This is the hell wig. This thing is huge. It's twice the size, and it's twice as heavy. Uh, the next thing they want you to do is line up these D bushings with the original ones, there's some uh, lubricant in here that goes inside of the split bushing right here. You just line it up. You take this bigger one and it goes up underneath here like that. And notice that you got a big hole here and a small hole here, just like that. Big hole, small hole. So make sure you keep that orientation, even with this top one that goes right down on here. Big holes together, small holes together. Then they give you, you use your original bolts that came out they were covered in thread lock that we cleaned up they go here these are longer bolts they replace the factory bolts they're going to go here and that's it i'm going to do the other side and i'm going to put this baby underneath there and bolt it up and show you what we got all right well, since i don't have anybody to help me but danny he's really just kind of a guard dog what i do is i temporarily support this thing on a couple of jack stands. I got tied into the frame back there just temporarily. What I'm gonna do here is put my big bolt in first, just thread it up in there, pull it up tight. Then I'm gonna put my small or other bolt in the back that came from the manufacturer with thread lock, tighten it up. Then I'm gonna remove this bolt and put it back in with thread lock just to make sure you know, it's not dry before I get everything tightened down. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to the bushings first. And then I'm gonna come back and tighten up where it attaches to the little uh, control arm there for the uh, frame mount, that little dongle there. I'm not sure what you call it, but anyway. Alrighty, I got the hell wig sway bar installed. That was a lot of fun. I hope my video on that's gonna help you. This is going to complete my suspension upgrade. Uh, as you see right here, where it attaches to that sway bar link, I did not thread lock that. But I did thread lock here and there where it goes into the frame mount. Uh, if you have the Reflex Roadmaster steering stabilizer, that bracket right there may be an issue. You may have to uh, round off a little bit right here on the edge of this bracket to make it fit on that side. But other than that, I got it in. It looks good. 
That thing is massive. Uh, if you'll see right there, there's my Sumo Spring upgrade. There's my Hell, I'm sorry, there's my Bill Stein front shocks. If you look way back there in the back, you'll see my Bill Steins back there on the rear along with the factory airbags. Uh, this is suspension upgrade is complete. The only thing I need to do now is a test drive and then it's on to the alignment shop to make sure everything looks good that I did and get this baby pointed right down the road. All right, let's go for a ride. Coast is clear. Wow, felt like a regular car. I think it felt good. Wow, felt really good. We're gonna do another little panic stop at 35 miles an hour. I don't see anybody behind me. I like it now. Here we go. Oh, that's no felt problem really good. there. Yeah. Yep, everything's nice and smooth and level. So our next step is gonna be doing some uh, highway driving and maybe have some big vehicles pass us to see how that looks, how that feels. And then it's on to the alignment shop. So that'll be the last thing that we do. All righty, see you then. Okay, so this is the last step of our suspension upgrade on this 2017 uh, E450 chassis. I'm staying here at Kessler Tire. Mark Smith just did a road test and took it back to the shop and you're gonna be surprised at what he found. The Roadmaster steering stabilizer that I put on last year, I followed the directions, I made sure the steering wheel was straight, and he said it was off about a quarter of an inch, which believe it or not, was enough to cause my RV to pull. So he made that adjustment, they did a little toe wind adjustment, they lubed the joints, checked everything else out, and he says we are good to go, so. This ends our suspension upgrade. Our next step is a huge road test where we're going to head up some winding roads with the elevation change of over a thousand feet. And we're going to do some interstate driving. So if you're ready, let's pack up and let's go. We are in the North Georgia mountains. We're getting ready to climb about 1200 feet up toward Blood Mountain to an area where in North Georgia, the Appalachian Trail reaches its highest point. So this is where the sway bar test is really going to come into play. Uh, sway bar, this is the Hellwig sway bar. It goes by many names, anti-sway bar, sway bar, stabilizer bar. But what its purpose is to do is to keep the rig level during turns. It keeps it from rolling outward. And with these curves we've got coming up, we're going to see that. Uh, Brenda's shooting video without any kind of gimbal or stabilizer so you'll be able to see in the video how much the RV rolls which so far I'm not seeing it roll at all so here we are coming up to some turns right now and I'm doing about 45 I know it says 25 I'm slowing down right in here take this turn and the RV tracks very well it's staying level the nose is not diving. Here we go down a steep little incline right here. And it's doing really well. What do you think, Brenda? Well, I, the biggest difference for me is I feel like I sit better in my seat and I used to feel like I needed to hang on on big curves because I would slide, but I don't even feel like I need to hang on anymore. Great. All right, guys. Well, this is going to complete our five part upgrade. And if you remember in part one of the video, I was gonna tell you which upgrade I thought you got the most bang for your buck. And I'm gonna tell you the way I installed it once again. I used the, uh, I installed the stabilizer bar, which the main purpose for that was to aid control of my vehicle in the event of a front tire blowout. The second thing I did was the Sumo Springs up front and the front Bill Stein shocks. I think that was a huge improvement overall. I think that was a huge improvement. Then I added the rear shocks and the uh, Hellwig sway bar. And now I can tell with the sway bar, you know, it's helping, it's helping a lot. Obviously I couldn't have taken off the shocks and put the factory shocks back on to test the Hellwig bar. But that being said, all these upgrades plus the alignment 
have made a huge difference. We're very happy. Okay, guys, that concludes our five amazing RV upgrades. Uh, until next time, we'll see you on the road and safe travel.